As I prepare for my Australia-New Zealand trip, I'm going to do six major cities over there uh, between April 23rd and May 2nd. Um, you know, I'm looking at the countries, obviously, near them that they export to India, China, Southeast Asia, and it just keeps reminding me the biggest thing that's going to happen coming out of this crash ahead, out of this final stage of the winter season from 2008 to 23, roughly, where we get the worst on the back end instead of on the front end, like in the early 30s, because we printed so much money to kick the can down the road. Very simple math there. Um, the biggest opportunity and the biggest change coming out of this for the world is going to be China versus India. China, obviously, since the early to mid 80s, has been the up and coming country. Uh, is now 59% urban, has been growing, has been adding 1.1% urbanization every year. That's very fast. India, for example, has been 0.3%. So China's urbanizing three to four times as fast. Their GDP per capita now is $18,369 when you adjust for the lower cost of living. I think it's more like $12,000 without it in U.S. dollars, but that's more fair. Uh, India's is only 7,432. So, uh, and, and they're only 34% urban. So this, India's been growing, especially more recently as China's been slowing, but China was growing 8, 10, 12%. And again, urbanizing faster than any country, a major country in history. I see the, the table shifting in this crisis partly because China finally has to pay the price from overexpanding and overbuilding so aggressively with its top-down strategy. That's how it got to 59% so fast. It got so rich so fast. And again, most of the poverty alleviated in the world has a lot of it's been in China. Well, instead, India's just chugged along, 0.3%. At 34% urban, they're only a little more urban than Kenya at 28%, and, and, and Kenya's got a GDP per capita of, of 3,400 something. So, I mean, so, so India's twice as rich as, as Kenya, a little more urban. China's more than twice in rich, at, at more than twice urban. And so, you know, China looks like the miracle. What, what, what also got me thinking about this the other day, I saw a rating of happiness uh, over time, the last decade around the world. And I noticed right away, China's happiness rating has gone up from about 4.7 towards about 5.3 or 4 a little below average uh, for the world. Uh, India's has gone down 10 to 12 percent, you know, from 5.5 down to 4.2 or something. I mean, it's, it's like, whoa. And, and, and this should be, this is kind of obvious to me. India is urbanizing too slowly. Uh, another article I just read in, in, in the last couple of weeks by a Morgan Stanley uh, analyst that grew up in rural India, he said, India will never be the next China. Well, I'm telling you, I disagree with that. And I'll tell you why. I, first of all, I agree with what he said. India is much more decentralized, much more rural. Yes, they are. They're a democracy. They're, they're the opposite of top down. And they have a messy, very diverse democracy. Every time somebody gets voted in office, the, the, the Indians just have a tendency, oh, just throw them out. You know, they're, they're cynical or something. I don't know what it is. It takes a month just to hold a national election like they're getting ready to do. A month because there's so many little stations for voting in so many little areas and stuff. It's complex. It's messy. The Indian culture has a socialist background as well. But here's what I look at and say, wait a minute. I don't, I think India is going to be the next China, and that's yet to be seen. They have to hold it together with their more progressive government and not vote them out this time or, or regress. When I look at what China's GDP per capita was when they were 34% a few decades ago, like India, it was less. It was a little over 5,000 versus India's 7,400. India's 30 to 40% more rich GDP per capita at the same stage, despite their backwardness and all this stuff and not top down. Um, so if we project out forward, and it is still a little early for India, 
uh, because they're only 34% urban. I feel better about projections when we're at 40% plus. Uh, Kenya's still very early too. But if we project out, and in India's pro progress has been slow, but very steady on a straight line basis, it projects India will have a GDP per capita at 85% urban sometime in the next century, 35,500 versus China's maturity at 27,000. Could India be richer than China? That would be the surprise of the coming decades, the next boom, and the coming century. If as the East, on my 165-year cycle, which is running like a clock, West peaked in 1985, China's been on the rise ever since, and, you know, Japan and, and South Korea and Southeast Asia and now India, and hopefully India accelerates, the East is going to be predominant for decades and decades to come, into 2150, far longer than any of us need to be concerned about. But that's the trend. What if India becomes the leading culture. China's workforce has already peaked at 2011. India's doesn't peak till 2055. India's got this British, British heritage and stuff. China does some, but more so. But again, I just look at the numbers, okay? I don't care what you say about difference in culture, whether top's down better or bottom's up. I think bottom's up is more sustainable growth, and China's going to prove this. I think China is going to get the hit the hardest and take five to ten years to come out of this crash when most countries will just take two, three, four years. And India, less than that. India has underbuilt infrastructures, expanded too slowly. That's why their people are less happy. They're not making the progress that the rest of Southeast Asia and China, people around them are making. China has expanded so much, there's plenty of capacity for everything. People in China don't have to walk for electricity and walk to get firewood and all this sort of stuff that Indians do all day out in the people that are still in rural parts or at edge of cities. So, of course, Chinese people are going to be a little more happy. Their wealth has grown faster. Urbanization brings better jobs, even if it brings smog and pollution and traffic, but both countries have that. So I think this is going to be the biggest thing. My theory, and again, I'm glad to be proven wrong on this, but my theory is China has been the great country for investment, domestic by its government, by raising debt and backing debt and, and, and aggressively backing uh, building of infrastructures and urbanization. India has been slow. Not much capital investment from the government, although it has more, especially on roads in the last 10 years. And they're not attracting the foreign investment. Where does the foreign investment go in the next boom after this crash and deleveraging when Investors realize, oh my God, China's in the worst shape. Now this won't be forever. It's still gonna go from 59% to 85% into, a, into the 2040s, well into the next boom and beyond. But it's not gonna have the, it's gonna be fighting against slowing demographics and this overbuilding. China could grow a decade and never build another condo or road or dam or railway station or anything and still incorporate more urban people even though they're not moving anymore from rural to urban. That will start again, but the point is, this downturn is gonna favor India. It will stomach it better, because it hasn't overexpanded. I think India's people and the world will realize India needs to grow faster, needs to urbanize faster. Hopefully that's what's happened. That's the big thing I'm looking for. Does the Indian population say, hey, you know, we want to grow faster? especially now that we could attract capital in a world where China isn't the magnet. So that's going to be the most interesting thing. Do these projections hold out? Does India start to urbanize faster? I'm just looking for 0.5% urban a year instead of 0.3. That'd be a big difference for India. India has been growing at 6 to 8% in recent years, while China slowed to 6%, and I think it's actually lower than that. So this could be the big shift that India starts growing in the next boom at 8, 9, 10%. China, when it finally comes out, maybe only grows because of their slow demographics. When urbanization starts back in, maybe they grow at 3 to 4%. That's my projection for China. It's still going to be a growth country. It's still going to be the second or first largest country for a long time. But it is a possibility. The farther we go out, U.S. tailors off in demographics after 2036-37. And, and will become a little less significant, even though it probably could still be the number one country after China falls for a while. 
China will be number one or two for a long time. India is up and coming. And somewhere later in this century or early the next century, when we are projected to be 90% urban by 2120, I know that's way out, but that's a lot of urbanization. That means China's got to be 85% or more urban by then, if not before. I think India just might become the number one country in the world, and I do, and I continue to say it will be the fastest growing country in the next global boom from 2023 or so to 2036 or 37, uh, unless they just screw it up politically, and I'm, I'm going to be watching, and uh, I hope you'll watch too. Thanks for listening.